Thursday, April 16th, 2020. And today we are going to take a look at our journal and do our check-in and then look at day three of our packet. So let's get started. All right, in my journal yesterday I wrote, I did not do the laundry today like I planned. It just didn't happen. Hopefully I'll get it done today. I hope I do because I need to wash it. And then today I said, I'm feeling like a four because I got to play with my dogs today. Yeah. So All right. So let's check that off our list. Journal and chicken. Check. And now let's look at day three of our packet. So I have my packet here. And all right, day three reading. It says read for 15 minutes, use a book of your own or a foldable book from the end of this packet. And you can read one of these books that we folded, any book you have at your house, you can go to Storyline Online, you can go into Google Classroom and look at some of the read alouds I've posted there. So whatever works, as long as you're reading and getting those stories. And then, hold on, I'm confused. And read. And then A Dinosaur Named Sue, which was our same story from yesterday. It says invite your child to read pages 29 through 32. And then it says discuss the events from the journal and then look at the images and read the captions. Ask how they contribute to the journal. So we read the entire journal entry yesterday. If you wanna be reminded of that, look at yesterday's video and you'll see the whole story again. But here it is, a dinosaur named Sue. And this time we're gonna pay um, special attention to the pictures in the caption. So this says this is the Badlands National Park in South Dakota. And then here's a map and it shows where they're at. On the next page, it says Sue found these bones sticking out of a cliff. Sue used tools to carefully remove rocks and dirt from the fossils. So that's what's going on here. Um, digging out bones is a hard and dirty job. And that's what's happening here. And Pete removed rocks and dirt from Sue's skull. Remember how huge the skull was? It was like five feet big. Oh, we have a few more pictures with captions. It says, a plaster cast helps protect the spoon during the trip to the lab. Yeah, I remember they had to like pat it a little bit to make sure that it wouldn't get damaged or broken. And then Sue is a big attraction at the Field Museum's Hall of Dinosaurs. Sue is 40 and a half feet long. Experts think this dino might have weighed 15,000 pounds. The bones alone weigh 3,922 pounds. And I did read that to you guys yesterday, but that's the caption for these pictures. So let's look at the directions again, because I kind of forgot what they said. Ah, it says, discuss the events from the journal and then look at the images and read the captions. How do they contribute to the journal? So why would they put those pictures and those captions there? Did it help you understand what was going on in the journal entries in the story that was happening? I would think so. You could do a thinking map to um, organize those thoughts or you can just talk about it with each other and that's totally fine too. All right, so for writing, it says write a diary entry as a character in a dinosaur named Sue. So your diary entry would be like, dear diary, it was hot when we were looking for dinosaur bones. So you're gonna pretend like you were there with them. So that would be pretty cool to read later. All right, and we have a grammar and spelling page and it has the long A sound. And remember long A makes the A sound. So we have rain, great, play, mail, stay, day, chain, break, say, and paint. And when we have something that where all the words relate like this, I like to do a tree map for our spelling words. So let's go ahead and make one right now before we even go to the section. I have my Mario notebook. I'm gonna open to the next available page. Here we are. And then I'm gonna see if I can put my camera so that you can see more of what I'm writing. Oh, well, kind of, all right. So to make my tree map, I'm gonna say long A, so that's gonna be at the top, and we have A, I, we have E, A, 
and we have a Y. So those are our branches. So my tree map looks like this so far. And then let's see rain. The word rain goes right here under AI. So I'm gonna write R A I N, rain. My next word is great, and that has an E A G R E A T, great. Actually, I'm gonna underline the part that makes the long A sound. So if you see right here, I underlined the long A. Let's keep going. After rain is play. And the A-Y sound makes the A. And then let's fast forward the rest of this. I'm sure you know what to do. All right. So, oh, let me switch this. I was able to put all of the words in a tree map. And I almost put one in the wrong spot. So I just put one line through it and put it where it belongs. So if you make mistakes, that's fine. Just cross it out and move on. Don't stress too much. And then maybe while you're reading, you'll see other long A words and you can add them to your list just like we do in our class. So I organized our spelling words, but let's take a look at the assignment. It says circle the spelling word that completes the sentence, then write it on the line. So number one says, I blank with my dog. And then we have choices. We have rain, break, or play. I rain with my dog. That does not make sense. I break with my dog. I play with my dog, which is pretty cool because that's what I did today. So I'm going to circle it and write it in. So it looks like this. The next one says, dad and Ben blank the fence. So do they stay, paint, or mail the fence? Number three says, we eat a blank lunch, a great lunch, a chain lunch, a paint lunch. You decide. It has been a good rain, day, or say. Okay. So here it says, fill in the boxes for the spelling word stay. So it says stay here. What does stay mean? Um, then write a sentence with the word stay. And then synonym. Synonym means the same. So what's another word that means stay? And then antonym means like the opposite. So what's a word, another word for, um, I'm sorry, the opposite of stay. So you can write that there. All right, so for math today, we have our math task, our math assignment, and then our math fluency. So our math task says counting stamps. The post office packages stamps like this. You can get 10 stamps in a strip and 10 strips of 10 in each. Yesterday, Mike saw four full sheets, seven strips, and two extra stamps in the drawer. He counted all the stamps and found out there were 472 stamps in all. He said the number 472 matches the four sheets, seven strips, and two stamps. Cool. Why did Mike's number match with the number of sheets, strips, and extra stamps? Draw a picture to help explain your answer. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a hint. If you use these, it might help you some, but you could just draw it too, and that would be fine. And then B says, today Mike found three extra stamps, one sheet and five strips. He said, because of how things matched up yesterday, I guess there are 315 stamps total. So you need to find the total number of stamps from here. And then explain why Mike's guess was incorrect. Oh no, he said there's 300. Oh, he's wrong. Why is he wrong? Oh, I hope you can figure that out. Definitely draw it if you need to. All right, our assignment today says expanded form shows the value of each digit in a number. Match each number to the correct expanded form. Remember, expanded form is when we stretch out the numbers by place value, so it goes like hundreds, plus the tens, plus the ones, equals that whole number. So that's expanded form. So this one says 345. So we need to find the one in this column that has 300s. Ooh, this has 300s. Uh, 40 in the tens place, and five in the ones place. So I'm going to draw that line. So it looks like that. The next one says 721, so we need to find 700, so there it is, then 20, and one. 
All right, so far so good. I think you guys can do the rest of this. We've done expanded form every day in our class for our number of the day. Ooh, math fluency today. It says two tens, five ones, and four hundreds. So I'm gonna give you a clue. This isn't in order. That's not hundreds, that's tens, ones, hundreds. So what's the number here? Two tens, five ones, four hundreds. So write the number and then use any strategy. Use visuals or models. Write a number, write the number the no another way. Ooh, this is different today. I'm used to saying write a story. And then how do you know your answer is correct? So let's see. If you write a number another way, you have some options. There's standard form, expanded form, word form. Is that it? I think so. So you decide how you wanna write it. Um, and I think that's it there. So that's our map. And now we get to look at art, which I'm excited about this part because we actually get to start coloring, but I wanna read the directions to make sure. Day three art, add color. Now it's time to add color. Use watercolors, markers, or crayons to fill the space between your lines. Well, I only have markers and crayons, and right now all I see are my crayons, so that's what I'm gonna use. I have the same crayons you do. See, I'm gonna use these. And I am going to start coloring my page. Let me move some stuff out of the way. And I'm going to tip my camera down so you can watch. And then we're probably gonna do this in fast forward. So hopefully you are okay with that. Well, and I use like my black pen, but I just use crayons and that's okay. If you have other art supplies, go for it. Um, tomorrow we are going to do our art reflection. I think I'm also going to cut mine out and glue it on a paper to give it kind of a frame. That way I can hang it up on my wall. And that's what we'll do tomorrow. So that's it for day three of our packet. I hope you're having a great week and I'll see you tomorrow. Stay gritty.